I will never understand why Shugo chooses to do that. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Muckluck Streams. I'm your charming self-proclaimed and your still humble host Muckluck with losing my train of thought. And we have today a game that was sponsored by one of the patrons for the month. He wants us to try something called FTL, which stands for Faster Than Light. Uh, this game, from looking at it, it's some kind of base simulator in space thing. Very simple graphics, but apparently very Look, complex to I've play. Got data, and Ooh. it's uh, it's apparently a lot. It has a lot more depth than it looks to at first glance. So I am diving into this for the first time. I just purchased this game. I have never played this game before. So without further ado, let's go into the tutorial. Welcome to FTL. You're the captain of a Federation starship on a very important mission. The Federation is currently being torn apart by vicious rebels. Your ship is carrying data vital- <laughs> Look, I've got data! Vital to the defense of the Federation. You will be traveling through dangerous sectors of the galaxy with the rebel fleet in hot pursuit. Make it to the exit beacon of each sector before the rebels can catch you. Alright, your ship, the Kestrel, is the focus of the typical game view. The circular icons at the bottom of the sh uh, screen are your ship's primary systems. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Let's do that. I'm in space! Alright. Systems use power from the reactor, pointed at by the arrow. Okay. These are your ship's subsystems. Unlike systems, they do not require power from the reactor. Hover your mouse over any system icon to get more info about the system. Each system's corresponding room will light up. Alright, so this one is shields. Projectile blocking shields. Manning increases shield recharge speed. Okay, so that's that room. Uh, engines charges the FTL drive and powers evasion. Manning increases dodge chance. Medbay heals crew members inside the medbay. Oxygen replenishes the ship's oxygen supply. Okay. Weapons. Click on a weapon to charge and fire. Manning reduces charge time. Uh, piloting requires a crew member to evade or combat, uh, to evade in combat or jump. Sensors enables view of all rooms and info for enemy ships. I don't see a room for that. I guess that's just all over the place. Uh, doors allow for remote opening and closing of doors. Why would I want to do that? Maybe if there's a fire or something? The hull meter, shield level, and current resources are in the top left. If your hull meter is reduced to zero, your ship will explode. Okay, so that's the big green bar is the hull integrity. That's the shield status, that's how much fuel, that's number of missiles, and that's drone parts. We should get going, but it looks like your engines are currently powered down. Green system boxes are powered, white system boxes are unpowered, and provide no benefit to the Kestrel. Okay. Left click on the engine system icon and power will transfer from reactor to engines. Try to keep your vital systems fully powered. Right click to depower a system if you want to reroute its power. Didn't Starfield have a similar system to this for the ships? Alright, so I'll transfer some power there. Alright. Oh no! Your engine room took two damage. Its system icon has become red to show it's broken. Your hull meter has also taken two damage. Your crew cannot repair the ship's hull, but they can fix the engines. Select your crew members using left click. Select multiple crew by left click and dragging. Select some crew to continue. With crew selected, right click on a room to send them there. Try sending your crew members to the engine room. It's, it's not working. Oh, I have to hit unpause the game, that's why. Who we got here? We got Tom and Mona, and Maria's piloting. Crew members will automatically repair systems, fight fires, fix breaches, and fight intruders in their room. Fighting low oxygen and fire will hurt the crew. Awesome! Your engines are repaired. Notice that repaired systems automatically try to repower themselves to their last power state. Some systems can be manned by crew members to provide small bonuses to the system. Crew members will automatically man any functioning system in their room. The silhouette above the power bars show if the system is manned. Um... Okay. So, like... 
I could do that. Oh no! A fire has broken out in the starboard airlock. You could send your crew members to put it out, but let's take advantage of your airlock. Open one of the airlock doors by left clicking on it. Opening doors allow you to drain sections of your ship of oxygen and put out fires. Rooms turn pink as the oxygen drains out. Your oxygen system will slowly refill your ship once leaks are gone. Now that your engines are fixed and fires are out, we should FTL jump to the next location. If you don't currently have a pilot, you should probably send a crewman to the helm. Each jump uses one fuel. Without fuel, you'll be stranded and unable to jump. Jumping also requires a crew member in the piloting system and a powered engine system. Click on the jump button to continue. I am maximum safe. Without, uh, I completely forgot what I read because of that. Let's see. Uh, jumping requires a crew member in the piloting system. Done. And a powered engine system. Done. Click on jump to continue. This is the beacon map. A ship marks your current location. Okay, so we're right there. Hover your mouse over location to get more information about it. An unvisited location. So much information! Left click on a connecting node to travel there now. Oh my god, the graphics! Every new location will have an event like this. You might have multiple choices available to you at an event. In this example, a weak pirate ship is trying to destroy you. Special blue choices like these are unlocked by having certain upgrades or equipment. They are nearly always a good choice. Welcome to combat. You can use spacebar or middle mouse to pause the game at any time to strategize, give commands, or reallocate your power. Try to pause the game now. You need to power your weapon to fight. The amount of power required is uh, pictured in the weapon box marked below. Left click on it to power it. A power weapon turns white. Right click to depower the weapon. The weapon, um, left click to arm it. Left click a powered weapon to arm it. Uh, okay. Then target a room in the enemy ship by left clicking on it. I'm trying to think about this. So, I gotta shoot through the shield no matter what. This, I would assume would drain the oxygen from the ship, but that would take time. If I could just take out that room, then the pilot's dead. That room is their weapon system. Let's try shooting right at the pilot. Um, you can also access hotkeys one through four to access your weapons. Um, okay. The weapon will fire when ready. Make sure the game is unpaused. Let's have that person go here and man the weapon system. Wait, do I have to keep clicking fire or will it keep firing on its own? Oh, there it goes. Oh no, your two shot laser cannot penetrate the pirate's level two shields, but luckily he can't get through yours either. Note, every two powered bars in your shield system nets you one more shield. Looks like you need some more help to get through a shield. Some events can provide items. This one's providing you with an Artemis missile launcher. Okay. The Artemis was automatically equipped in an available weapon slot. Shooting it expends your missile stock, but missiles pierce through all enemy shields. Use the missile to damage the enemy shield system, and then your lasers can get through as well. Alright, so I gotta power that. And then two, and hit the shield. Okay. Uh, maybe lower the music a bit. Let's pull the audience. Audience, do you think the music is too is too loud? Do we need to turn it down? Uh, I am totally okay with doing that if it's if it's needed. Lower it a bit. All right, hang on. Okay. You'll notice an enemy systems are damaged or destroyed. Uh, hang on a second. All right, so options. All right, it's down a little bit. Hopefully that's good. Uh, their icons turn orange or red. Repeatedly attacking red systems do no additional damage to the system, but will still damage the enemy's hull. Reduce their hull to zero and they will explode. 
If you need a reminder for what each enemy system icon stands for, you can mouse over the green system along the bottom of the target box. Choose your targets wisely, though weapons and shields often make good choices. Now defeat the pirate. Oh, there we go. We got it. Easy game. You destroy the pirate ship. As salvage, you gain from left to right some fuel, missiles, scrap, and another weapon. Note the reward resource icons correspond to your reserves along the top of the screen. Weapons or drones are added to your cargo if there is no more room in their respective system. Left click on the ship's info button so we can equip your new weapon. This is your equipment screen. You can see more detailed information about your weapons, drones, or augments by mousing over them. Click and drag your new halberd beam over the Artemis to swap them out and then hit accept. Okay. Oops, your weapon system, max power 2, is not upgraded enough to support your new weapon, which requires power support 3. Open your ship screen back up so we can fix this. This is the upgrade screen. You can see detailed info about your systems and upgrade them by spending scrap. You can also upgrade your reactor at the bottom of the menu, which is important for keeping everything fully powered. Left click on your weapon system to upgrade it, then click accept to close upgrades. Now, power your new weapon. You might need to power down your other weapon in order to have enough power. Right click to depower weapons. Okay, done. Final tip, you can rearrange your weapons in the uh, weapon system toolbar by clicking and dragging. Okay, if your weapon system is damaged, this order determines the order they are depowered from right to left. That's it for the basics. Good luck out there. Press continue to quit the tutorial. Chat, I've mastered the game. All right, so yeah, a little review. FTL, easy game. Not nearly as complicated as everyone makes it out to be. It's all right. Uh, I'd say uh, 8 out of 10. Mmm. Tasty. All right. Oh, let's go ahead and crank it up to maximum difficulty. Easy. All right, new game. Uh... The Kestrel. What was our ship name in, um, Helldivers? Oh, wait, I remember. The Pride of Pride. There we go. All right, um, enter that. Ship. Uh, what is the list? This is the ship list. Here you can get a summary of all your achievements and see your progress in unlocking uh, all playable ships. To unlock a new ship, you have two options. Find and complete a unique quest within the game world. These will often start in homeworld sectors. Alternatively, beat the game with the previous ship in the list to unlock the next game. Hover over any ship to get more details. Okay, so we just need to beat the game. Easy. Uh, layout. Looks like I can't change anything. Complete two for layout B. Have six unique aliens on the Kestrel Cruiser. Have 11 systems installed. Uh, as the Kestrel Cruiser, repair back to full health when it only has one HP remaining. Okay. Missiles, Burst Laser Mark II. I can't... System, drone system not installed. Advanced Edition content? Sure. Alright, star game. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey. Make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But, get to the exit before the pursuing Rebel fleet can catch up. Tip, hidden choices. When you see a blue color choice in an event, it's a special option which can be made available by your current equipment. All right. Uh... Okay. Jump here. You see a civilian space station with heavy damage. You receive a message. We've been hit hard by the war. We need more drone parts to speed up our repairs. We'll buy some from you if you have extra. I have none, so ignore. Okie dokie. Upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Uh, I got no money. Too bad. You'll regret this. Oh boy, it's time for violence. Alright, um...
Charging burst laser. Alright, so you go in there. Actually, no, you stay there, actually. You go in there and fix that. Please don't kill us. We'll give you everything we have. <laughs> give me your stuff. Idiots. All right. So we're fixing the shield system. Uh, let's get him in there. All right. Shields are fixed. Easy. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it here. All right. Jump. Check the auto-fire button under the weapons list. This allows you to keep firing at the same room without having to retarget. Oh, that's why it wasn't doing that. Okay, got it. Uh, let's go up here. Bromwin, thank you for the Prime sub. Welcome. Appreciate that. Uh, Federation encrypted signal is being broadcast from a nearby planet. Uh, send an away party to investigate. You find a cache of supplies that were surely left for any loyal Federation ships in trouble. You take all that you need, leaving some for others. Okay. Blue thing. Don't auto-fire. You want to time your weapons to do at the same time? I can't even power my weapons to fire at the same time. Uh, it's worrying that the rebels have penetrated so deep into uncharted space, even if it's only an unmanned craft. It's arms, it's weapons, you should do the same. Actually, wait, can I? Oh, I can. Uh, what is the blue? I don't know what that is. Oh wait, that's Artemis. No, just don't don't fire the missiles. We want to save some of those. Oh, the oxygen. Uh, the ship explodes, leaving substantial collection of useful materials. Go fix that. We need the oxygen. You go help him? Wait, why are all the rooms dark? You're inside a nebula. Your sensors will not function, but the rebel fleet will advance more slowly towards you. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. You find a mercenary for hire at this beacon. Their unique skills can sometimes prove to be useful. Uh, hire to delay the rebels. Hire to scout the sector. Fight the ship. Go delay the rebels. The mercenary ship masks its jump signature to mimic your own, then jumps off in the opposite direction. This should keep the rebels guessing. Fleet delayed by two jumps. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before you have time to make contact with them, they fade into the nebula. Attempt to follow and help them. Your search is hopeless. Your sensors can't pick up anything. Okay. Mm, you could jump into the middle of a plasma you jump into the middle of a plasma storm. Multiple recently incapacitated ships loom in the shadows, briefly illuminated by the lightning. Uh search for wreckage. Most of the debris is hardly even worth uh, usable as scrap. However, you eventually find an intact weapon that can be mounted on your ship. Uh wait. Wait, what? Oh, there it is. Pike beam can cut across entire ships, assuming there's no shield to stop it. Hmm. Hmm. Can I upgrade the weapons one time? Power's all weird right now. Is it because of the nebula? Store. 
Uh, transmission from the nearby planet indicates an outpost below which offers supplies to travelers. You send down an away party to check it out. I have very little money. Uh, so we can fix up a little bit. All right. Okay. You've arrived at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Scanners indicate a battle is taking place nearby. It seems someone is under attack by space pirates. Help them. You power up your weapons to engage the pirates. Come on, Pike Beam, go. There we go. Easy. The pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to contact the civilian ship. They respond, it's a good thing you came when you did. We'd be dead now otherwise. I'm a shipwright, and I'd like to help you like you help me. The captain offers to install a piece of equipment on your ship. Heavy ion. Drains and locks systems. One shot per charge. Possible effect stun. Ion damage 2. Hotkey 4. Try that instead of the pike beam. See how, see how it feels. Alright, they're fixing... They're repairing the engine right now. Okay. Um, next sector. Pirates! A few Federation-friendly planets still exist in this sector, but they're constantly under attack by pirate raids. This is a dangerous sector, be careful. Okay. Can you name your crew? I don't know. A small research station orbits a nearby pulsar. It appears largely abandoned, but you detect power signatures flaring up as soon as you're in scanning distance. A small combat ship launches from the station. Pirates. Alright, so let's do... What does the blue mean? Teleporter. Uses this to put people on your ship. Oh no. power to some of our weapons. Did they just put more people on my ship? Oh my god. Can I take the pilot out of there? Okay, we killed the ship. Alright, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap metal. Ion pulse imminent. So is that just like an environmental thing? That thing that's just going ham in the background? I'm waiting for the drive to, uh, to charge up so I can leave. Uh, 
Uh, distress beacon. Let's go. Above the ship is a triangle. It's like the environment thing. Okay. It appears the distress beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Your sensors are picking up a single life form. Investigate. You find a colony that seems to have been recently attacked. Exploring the devastation, you find a lone survivor. Invite him to join your crew. He says he was a weapons operator before getting stranded. He happily offers his services for a time in exchange for getting off that rock. Charlie. Hello, Charlie. It, Charlie appears to be a bug. Okay. Uh, all right, you, you man the weapons, Charlie. Okay. Jump. Stress. Your cockpit lights up with warning signals. You're being targeted by a nearby ship. The distress call was a lure to attract unwitting ships into weapon range. You prepare for a fight. I'm gonna try using heavy ion to knock out their uh, weapons if I can. What happens if you have someone manning the shields? Increases recharge speed. Okay. This ain't going well. Not going well. I don't even remember what that room was. They offer to give you some of their goods if you don't destroy the ship. I accept. It wasn't even close. Got to target their weapon systems more. Dude, from the beginning of the fight, I had my ion gun hitting their weapon system. And it never worked. <laughs> And, it, like, after they shot me twice, it knocked out my, uh, power, and then the ion went offline. Could do that. You can upgrade it to have locking doors to stop people who teleport over from having free reign of your ship. Uh, I mean, we're, we're just started. Let's go back to the uh, pike beam. All right, uh, exit. Do you guys typically go straight for the exit or like wander around and do other stuff too? This long range beacon is almost hidden within a nebula. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Wander as much as possible. Mantis control, that sounds fun. You need as many resources as possible. You've entered a poorly charted area of space known to be home to the Mantis. Ensure your hull plating is up to scratch and that you have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. Uh... 